Yeah. My name is Fuckaroo Banjo, and this is Punch List. Project, we're going to focus on one of the most elusive birds in America, the Oriole. This specialty bird house was custom made to attract the Oriole. Here comes one right now. <coughs> Magnificent. Oh, now what's this? Why, wow, this is how our amazing product will look once it's finished. It looks as splendid on the right as it does on the left. Let's tear down this house. We'll need a floor, a body, and two pieces for the roof. If only all houses were this easy. These are the tools we'll be using. Don't worry, this won't turn into hostile. Seems like a lot for such a tiny house, but don't worry, we'll make it as harmless as possible. Oh, we can't forget about this guy. He's just like the, the main body. First we'll make the roof, because we can't raise one if it isn't built yet. They both need to be two and a half inches wide by twelve inches long. Once they're cut proportionally, take it to the table saw and cut a twenty-two and a half degree angle on one end of each block. That's 22 and a half degrees. Now we need to trim the body of the birdhouse. The body will be 5 inches wide by 10 inches long. Anyone want to guess what angle it needs to be cut for the roof? Anyone? Oh, I'm sorry. The answer is 22 and a half degrees. We would have also accepted negative 337 and a half degrees. Slice and dice both sides so we have a nice and slender body. And for those who got it right, well good for you, you're actually paying attention. Grab some hefty carpenter's glue and glue the roof to the body. To make sure the sucker doesn't go anywhere, add some nails. This works better with a nail gun because guns always make projects more fun. Huh. Now have you ever heard of a house without a door? No? Well me either. Unless we're talking about that Dickinson poem. And that doesn't count because metaphors don't provide shelter. So grab your hole saw and slap that 2 inch drill at the end of it. It's time to provide shelter. Make the hole 3 inches from the bottom, right in the center. You might want to clamp it down because the wood might try to escape if you're using your hands. The hole saw won't make it perfect, so grab your jigsaw and start trimming the fat. This can make the wood rough, so grab some sandpaper and smoothen it out. We don't want those Orioles to get splinters. We had so much fun with the hole saw the first time that we wanted to bring it back. Instead of the 2 inch drill, downsize it to the 1 and a half inch and take it to the center of the floor. Make sure the floor is cut to be 2 and a half inches wide by 10 inches long. We're using a clamp again because we can't afford any more wood to escape our grasp. No surprise here, we need to attach the floor to the body. Grab your drill and let at it. Sand down anything that's coarse. Bam, check that out. Grab your drill and one eighth spit. We need to hang this out to die. I mean dry. I mean to feed Orioles. We also need to drill both sides of the body to place the golf tees. It's a little known fact that Orioles are trying to be the go-to animal for sports. 
First baseball, then golf. Watch out, Tiger. Once drilled, you'll need to cut the golf tees in half to make them fit. When we looked at this, we thought, hey, how can we make this project more extreme? Well, how about we use a Japanese saw to cut it? Ha! Ha ha! Now take the sawed off tees, slap some glue on its end, and place into the holes we just drilled. There. Just add the shot glass and there you have it, a fully furnished birdhouse. Now that we finished our birdhouse, we gotta add the finishing touches. First, Orioles love the color orange and it draws them in. So we're gonna take an orange, cut it in half, and impale each side on the golf tees. Then we're gonna take jelly and place it inside of the shot glass. Orioles love jelly. They come for the oranges and they stay for the jelly. Now the birds have a place to hang out Friday nights and talk about how they miss high school. Punch list!